Thank you very much indeed, Roy, for your invitation, or sorry, for your welcome tonight. It's lovely to be back to the, back to the lifeboat, but un unfortunately for the reason our brother Bertie has been laid aside, but I was, I'm so glad tonight I was, I was able to come and to help out here in the lifeboat. Isn't it hard to believe, friends, that it's a year ago tonight was the closing night of the mission that we had here last year? Where has indeed time gone? I find time's very much like my hair. It's disappearing very quick. The only thing you can do with time, you can redeem the time, but I can't redeem the hair. But, but thank you very much indeed, Roy, and uh, I'm just so glad that I was able to come this evening. From June onwards of last year, I, I had it upon my heart, I believe it was the Lord led it on my heart, keep January free. And uh, I know I had only one Sunday to do in January because I just felt that the Lord wanted me to take a wee time out just to recharge and to, and to have a wee time out. And, uh, but you know the Lord, the Lord knows the end from the beginning. And uh, the Lord knew that my father was going to pass away in, just before Christmas there. And the Lord knew that uh, what was coming. Uh, my, my father's death was a great shock to the family, but it wasn't a shock or surprise to the Lord. The Lord knew, and the Lord makes no mistakes. And I would like to thank the, the fellowship here for your faithfulness and your praying for us as a family during our time of sorrow and grief. Now, we're turning tonight to John's Gospel, and we're in John's Gospel tonight, chapter 9, the Gospel of John. And we're in the ninth chapter this evening, and we're commencing to read from verse 1. John chapter 9, and reading from verse 1, please. John's Gospel, chapter 9, and verse 1 we read, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? I want you to notice, first of all, the, the question that the disciples asked. Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? You see, the disciples here in verse 2 somehow believed that this we, this man one day was born as a little blind baby, and, and they tended to believe that this man was born blind because of some sin that had taken place. They said, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? You see, they believed that, that, that sin must have happened somewhere to cause this man to be born blind. You know, I want to put a wee record straight because some people believe that when a wee baby is born into a home and it's born with some disability, they nearly tend to believe something happened somewhere to cause this to happen. Sometimes the very parents themselves blame themselves when something like this happens. What have we done wrong? Or have, where, have we, where have we gone wrong that this should happen? But you know, sometimes, child of God, we need to listen to what the Lord Jesus answered. He says, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents. You see, child of God, I want you to know this evening, my dear friend, the Lord Jesus made it very clear. It was nothing to do with what anybody had done. I have noticed and I know a number of real godly families where they had wee children come into this world disabled. And it was no fault of their own. And it's wrong for people to judge them. And it was the same on this account. 
Here was a man who was born blind. One day he came into this world as a, a tiny blind baby. And the Lord Jesus answered and said, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came, saying, the neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay, and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam, and wash, and I went, and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. And we know that the Lord will bless that reading from his own precious truth. In John chapter 9, in these verses that we have read tonight, my dear friend, we are introduced to a man this evening who had a wonderful encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to say to you tonight, my dear unsaved friend, the greatest encounter you'll ever have on earth is an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. I can thank God tonight that I had that wonderful encounter on the 26th of August, 1985. An encounter that not only changed my life, but it was an encounter tonight that changed my destiny. Because I was a lost sinner on my road to hell, but that night when I met the Savior, my destiny changed. And tonight I'm on the road to heaven. I want to say this evening, my dear unsaved friend, before you leave this meeting tonight, I trust that you'll have that soul-saving, life-changing encounter with the Lord Jesus. You know, there's nothing like an encounter with Him. You see, this evening we come to a man tonight, just a poor, blind beggar. A man tonight who was blind from his birth. From the very moment he was born, this man never never knew what it was to look to the, uh, and see the loveliness of light. All his days were spent in darkness. And, and as we look at this man in John 9 tonight, I want to say that he's a hopeless case as far as the human effort's concerned. He's beyond human help. He was a man tonight who nobody, anything or nothing, could do anything for him. I see tonight a person with a great calamity because he was blind from his birth. You know, friend, tonight, 
If you're in this meeting and you're not saved, this is how you are spiritually. Because the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. And tonight the devil has you blind. And this evening, friend, tonight there are things that you cannot see. And perhaps this evening, my dear unsafe friend, for many years you cannot see tonight that you're a sinner. You cannot see tonight that you're perishing in your sin. There's a whole lot of people tonight cannot see that. And there's a whole pile of people this evening who cannot see that the very fact why Jesus died on Calvary's cross, that he died there for them. You know there's people who can't even see that this evening. That the Lord Jesus, that when he died on that cross on Calvary's hill, they cannot see that he died for them. My dear own saved friend this evening, I want you to know that Jesus died for you. You see, not only do we see a calamity, but I see a compassion. Because it says there, and as Jesus passed by, he, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. I want you to notice something to see this evening, friends. I want you to know tonight that in the heart of the lovely Lord Jesus, there's compassion. There's compassion tonight for the worst of cases. And tonight, there's compassion in his heart for you. You know, when the Lord Jesus saw this man in John 9, we don't see him looking at him and walking on, no, we see that his heart was touched and his heart was moved as he saw the, this poor old blind man and you know, friend, this evening, the Lord Jesus has a com heart of compassion for the lost. He has a heart of compassion for the perishing. He's got a heart of compassion for the sinner this evening. And my dear own a friend sitting in this meeting, I want you to know tonight as the Lord Jesus looks upon you and upon your soul, he looks upon you tonight with love and with compassion. And I wonder this evening, my dear unsaved friend, do you understand tonight? Can you see tonight that this same Lord Jesus in John 9, as he saw this man which was blind from his birth, sees you this evening? Spiritually blind, spiritually lost. But tonight, unsafe friend, I've got news for you. He loves you. And he's got compassion in his heart. And tonight he's searching for you. Tonight he's looking for you. Tonight he calls for you. Compassion. And you know, the Lord Jesus didn't only look on this man with compassion, but with compassion he done a work for this man, a work that gave him light, a work that nobody else could, could accomplish. I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus this evening is able to do something more than what religion can do. Religion didn't do anything for this man. And tonight, unsaved friend, the Lord Jesus not only wants to give you light, He wants to give you life, life more abundantly. He says, I have come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You know, there's a whole pile of people who doesn't believe that. They think, ah, oh, well, that's, all, that's only for old fellows. That's only for the, for the over 70s. I thought it was for the over 40s when I was 20. But let me say something tonight, friends. 20 years of age, I came to Jesus as I was, and mind it wasn't in a shortened time. 
I can remember it well. Sitting in the Church of Ireland, church there, knocking a cloy in mind, it wasn't a short and tie, it was in a pair of jeans and a pair of Dr. Martin boots and an old UDR jumper on me, and me soaked to the skin. But I came to Jesus that night as I was. Weary, worn, and sad, but I found in Him a resting place, and He has made me glad. Oh, glory to God. And tonight that experience can be your experience. But you know, friend, it brought confusion, didn't it? Look, look, look what it says there. Verse 8 and 9. And the neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat in bed? Some said, This is he. Others said, He's like him. I'll tell you something now, friend. There's people in whose lives the Lord changes, and it brings confusion. Is this the wee man that was blind there this morning? Is that the man that sat in bed? Is, boys, I, I think it's him. Well, it looks like him. You know, friend, the Lord Jesus brought a change to this man's life, but it brought confusion to the community. Same thing happens. There's people who the Lord has saved, and people would say, you know what, don't believe that's the same man at all. I can say this evening, the Lord Jesus brings change, and he brings a difference. I remember walking across our estate under in Sydney Crescent, and this wee woman came across, she came across like a bullet. She says, is it true? I says, is it what true? She says, is it true that you're saved? He says, Connie, it's true. She says, I knew someone was different. You know, the biggest people who I, who I felt awful difficult to tell was my mother and father. How are they going to take it? They were staunch Church of Ireland. And I said to myself, boys, to tell them that I'm saved by you would really, would, would really throw the coal in the fire. And I remember sitting at home, I come home from Derek Loans that night, and I remember sitting down at my tea table, never said a word. It was Tuesday night, never forget it. And there I was eating my tea, and my mother asked me the question, are you saved? I says, who told you? I just eat away, you see. And I was quaking at the same time. I was eating away like that. She says, nobody told me. I've seen the change. He says, what do you mean you've seen the change? Notice the cursing stopped. I just noticed the difference in your attitude. I can tell you, friend, tonight the Lord Jesus brings a change. He can bring confusion. Boys, I don't believe that's the same fella that I knew. That's the change. Many people, like I, like I wasn't a drunkard or an alcoholic or I never gambled or nothing like that, but I just what to call the local legion. And people say, I can't believe George McConnell's here. I can't believe it. But I'll tell you this. When the Lord Jesus saves, he brings a change, and it's a change that people notice it. And I'll tell you this, friend. If there's no change, then there's a question. And this whole incident brought a great confusion to the neighbors. I tell you, even the very old Pharisees were at others' throats. And it says, and, uh, and it said, therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is none of God because he, he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, well, how can a man that is a sinner do such much miracles? And there was a division among them. Boys, I'll tell you, uh, it brought great confusion. But it's not the calamity and the compassion or the confusion that God wants to speak to you about this evening. Friend, it's, it's the confession. It's the confession. Verse 10, Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? And this is what he said, A man that is called Jesus. That was it. No beating about the bush. There was no drop on the head. He just comes straight out with it. A man that is called Jesus. He made it clear that the person called Jesus was the person that done this for me. I'll tell you one thing. It was a man that is called Jesus. Save my soul. It's a man that is called Jesus. That set me for heaven. It's a man that was called Jesus tonight that saved my soul. Oh, it was. And tonight, that's my text. 
a man that is called Jesus. I want to see a friend tonight. There's nobody else that the Lord, there's nobody else tonight that the Lord wants you to think about other than a man that is called Jesus. And as we look at this man that is called Jesus tonight, the first thing you ought to know about this man, he's the Son of God. I'm telling you tonight, don't see a friend. This man that is called Jesus tonight is the Son of God. And you need to believe tonight he's the Son of God. And my friend, this evening, always remember that because many say different. Others say, ah, well, now, I don't believe he was the Son of God. I believe he was a good man. And I believe he was this and I believe he was that. Let me make one thing absolutely clear tonight, unsafe friend. He's the Son of God this evening. Remember the centurion at the cross said, Truly this man is the Son of God. Even the very demon said, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God. Even God himself said, Thou art my beloved Son. Listen, unsafe friend, I'm going to warn you of someone this evening. This man that is called Jesus is the one with whom you're going to have to do with someday. This man that is called Jesus, one day you're going to meet him. I'll tell you this, friend, he's not only the eternal one, he's the inescapable one. And honestly, friend, I want you just to pause for a moment and Ponder on the moment when you're going to meet him and you're going to stand before him. Stand before him, you will. And there's no getting out of it. And tonight he's the Son of God. This man that is called Jesus tonight is the one with whom we all will have to do. And there's no getting out of it. My dear unsafe friend tonight, now you just pause for a moment. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, one day, will face you. One day you'll stand before him. And I'm telling you now, unsafe friend, there's no escaping the fight. One day, you will stand before him, the Son of God. But the big question is, how will you stand before him? There's a story in the Gray and Adams' commentary about a doctor who made it his chief concern in matters of religion to degrade the character and the deity of Christ. He viewed the Savior with such contempt that he always spoke of the Lord Jesus as nobody other than the carpenter's son. He was nobody other than the carpenter's son. During his final weeks of life on this earth, this man was dying from a terminal illness. And he was heard saying often, I'm a dying man. I'm a dying man. 
And what affects me most? He said, what affects me most? I'm going out. I'm going out to be judged by the carpenter's son. And tonight, you're going to face him. And you'll either stand before him and man, you'll look upon him too. But how will you look upon him? Will you look upon him as your Savior? Or will you look upon him as your judge? A man that is called Jesus' friend is the Son of God. And you make sure you're ready to meet him. Because he's the one tonight who is able to save. Glory to God. But he's the one tonight who also destroys both body and soul in hell. A man that is called Jesus' friend now you think of him tonight. The Son of God, but listen to it, who was sent from God. You know, we read that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And I want you to see this man that is called Jesus tonight. He's the one tonight who came to seek and to save that which is lost. He came into this world to save sinners. He came into this world not to condemn the world. Listen to it. He came into this world that the world through him might be saved. This man that is called Jesus tonight, friend, he, he came to seek you, but he came to save you. He came to save you from your sins. He came to save you from going to hell. This man that is called Jesus. I'm telling you this evening, my dear friend, God sent him into this world so that lost sinners such as you and I could be saved. And that's what you are this evening, friend. A lost sinner. But I want you to know this evening that God sent him into this world not to condemn you, but that you through him could be saved. Oh, friend, I often think of that wee verse written by Stuart Kane where he penned those words when I think that God, his Son, not sparing, but sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. And on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he died, he bled and died to take away my sin. And this man that is called Jesus tonight, unsafe friend, stands between you here and now and eternity. And tonight he wants to save you. Tonight he's calling you. He's been sent to seek you. And I'll tell you this, friend, what you do with a man that is called Jesus this evening will determine what he will do with you in eternity. Oh, friend, tonight, I can say with a word of testimony, in loving kindness Jesus came, my soul in mercy, to reclaim. And I want to say tonight, unsaved friend, a man that is on, a man tonight that is called Jesus. He's the Son of God who was sent from God to be the sacrifice of God. 
You know, friends, this evening, that's why he came. He came to go all the way to Calvary's rugged, blood-stained cross. And there on that hill so long ago, friends, they took this man that is called Jesus and they nailed him to an old rugged cross. They put thorns on his brow. They stripped him naked. And friend, they spat upon his face and they cursed and mocked him. And they made a laughing stock out of him. My friend, they lifted him up on Calvary's hill that day, crucified to an old rugged cross. And friend, I want you to see a man that is called Jesus tonight, crucified, with nails in his hands and feet, and his visage marred more than anybody else's. And I want you to notice, friend, that this man that is called Jesus, that hung on Calvary's cross that day, hung there because I, because of you, because he died that we might be forgiven. And he died there to make us good, I, and he, he died there that we might go at last to heaven, saved through his precious blood. Because, you know, friend, God demanded a sacrifice. God demanded a sacrifice. You see, friend, tonight no sacrament could meet the demands of a holy God. With people all over Northern Ireland tonight believing that their holy communion is going to save them. No. Of a whole lot of people across Northern Ireland tonight believe that the Mass is going to save them. No. A lot of people across the north of Ireland believe that their places of worship is going to save them. No. A man that is called Jesus had to give his life as a sacrifice in Calvary's hell. on your behalf and on mine. Does it not touch your heart, unsaved friend, when you gaze upon that center cross and see the bleeding form of one hanging there in such disgrace? But yet, Yet this is what God demanded. So that mankind could be saved. I want you to look into the eyes of a man that is called Jesus. And I want you to see that in his eyes there's love. In his eyes there is mercy. In his eyes you can find tonight that longing that he has within his heart that you would come to him because unsaved person tonight you're perishing. And you and I don't know how long any of us have got left on this earth. But the only hope that you have between now and eternity is in a man that is called Jesus. And I'll tell you this, friend, this evening. I want you to listen. And I want you to hear him, say, hear him say, Come. Come unto me. Because him that cometh to me, 
Are you willing always? Cast out. But I want to finish this evening. Unsafe friend. This man tonight that is called Jesus offers you tonight the salvation of God. Neither is there salvation in any other. Because there's none other name under heaven. What, what name is that now? The name of a man that is called Jesus, whereby we must be saved. Can I ask you a personal question tonight? Who or what are you hoping in when it comes your time to die? Who or what tonight are you hoping in when it comes your turn to go? Many tonight, many tonight are clutching and holding on to something, on to things that will not count. There's many people this evening who's clutching on to crucifixes, believing that when it comes their time to die, God will accept them because they're holding a the crucifix. There's many tonight, listen to me, there's many tonight who never opened a Bible. And there's many people who never opened a Bible in their life when they knew that the moment for them to die was coming. Asked for the family Bible to hold it. Hoping and praying that when death would come and they're holding the Bible, somehow God will accept them. You know, friend, you could die tonight holding a thousand Bibles, but it won't save you. I want you tonight, and I invite you to take the nail-pierced hand of a man that is called Jesus and take him into your heart this evening to be your Savior. Because as many as received him, to them give he power to become the sons of God. The day on thief, that day on Calvary, simply turned and trusted. What about you this evening? What about you tonight? What are you going to do with this man that is called Jesus? I'm going to make it clear one more time. One day you will stand before him. There's no getting out of it. There's no running away from it. Because one day you will stand before him. And you make sure that you put things right before it happens. How do I do that, George? Well, I'll tell you how you'll do it very simply. You repent tonight of sin. 
And you repent tonight from the silly old notions that you have that I'm good enough and my church and my clergyman and, and, and this is going to save me. You repent of all them old silly notions. And you come believing that a man that is called Jesus who died for me is the one that saves and must save. And you ask him to come into your heart and believe. And you get it right tonight before you leave this meeting. Because I'll tell you this, you can leave it and walk away from it. But one day, there's no walking away from the moment when you'll stand before him. Will you trust him tonight before it comes? Will you take this man that is called Jesus tonight into your heart to be your saviour? So that when it comes your time to die, all will be well. As my friend this evening, all I do tonight is uplift this one man as the only saviour of sinners. And tonight, he needs to be your saviour. Don't perish. Don't reject him, friend, receive him. Come now to this man that is called Jesus and be saved. Before it's forever too late. Let's all bow in a wee word of prayer together, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Listen on, see a friend tonight. Forget about me. Fix your attention, fix your thoughts tonight, right now. Just fix them. On a man that is called Jesus. And I want you to really know tonight and look upon him. And be reminded that he is the Son of God. He has the power to save. Thank God. But you remember he has the power to destroy. But this man that is called Jesus, tonight he's seeking for you. Tonight he wants to save you. That's his, that's his concern. That's his call. But it's your choice to come. Wonder tonight, will you come? I have tossed this in your mind to and fro for many weeks, months perhaps. But tonight, tonight is the night to make the choice, to take the step, and to decide what you will do with a man that is called Jesus. What will you do tonight? Will you say to him, Lord Jesus, I know tonight that you're calling me. I know tonight, Lord, that I am perishing in my sin. I know and I believe in my heart, Lord Jesus, that you, that you died on that cross for me. And Lord, you have the power to save me. You have the power to change me. And you have the power tonight to to assure me that I can live for you. Up until now, Lord Jesus, my heart door's closed. It's, 
It's, it's, it's, it's, it's closed tight, but now, Lord Jesus, just now I'm, I'm going to open, Lord Jesus, now my heart's door. And Lord Jesus, I open my heart's door for you. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will come into my heart right now. Come in, Lord Jesus, and forgive me for my sins. And cleanse me with thy blood. And, and come, Lord Jesus, in and save me by thy grace. Have mercy upon my soul. But come in, Lord Jesus, and be my Savior. Come in tonight, Lord, and be my, to be my Lord. Save my soul, Lord Jesus. I plead with thee, come into my heart and save me. And as I ask you into my heart, Lord Jesus, now I give you my life. And I pray, just take my life, Lord, whatever's left. I give it to thee. And Lord Jesus, I believe I believe. Praying tonight in these moments, solemn moments as they are, tonight if you have made that earnest plea in prayer, and you meant every word of it, and you prayed that from the very depths of your heart, I want to say tonight, you're saved. But you must confess. You must come out now and tell us. That's how God demands it. You must come and confess it now. I pray that by the grace of God, you'll do that before you leave. But friend, tonight, this man that is called Jesus, there's no escaping him. You come to him this evening. Seek him. Be saved. Lord, tonight, I pray for the souls of them amongst us this evening, Lord, not saved, that Lord, tonight, by thy grace and through the operations of the Holy Spirit, Bring salvation to them, we pray, in thy lovely name we ask it. Amen.